Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is video three in my How to Build a Socket series of videos. The previous video concluded with pouring the silicone to make a master mold of my residual limb. In this video, I'll be taking a very high level view of the artistry that goes into taking a plaster cast pulled from the silicone mold and refining it in order to make a buck that'll produce a well-fitting fiberglass shell. I've seen in the comment section several people ask why I don't just use photogrammetry to scan the residual limb and just print the shell. Photogrammetry is cool and all, but it doesn't take in consideration or compensate for the varying densities of the tissue that makes up the residual limb. It also doesn't account for the areas of the residual limb that can and cannot be mechanically loaded. Let alone that your residual limb isn't a constant. That's just one of many difficulties that you'll encounter when building a hard shell socket for a device that's actuated by physical motion. You need a shell that's tight enough that your residual limb isn't floating around inside the socket, wasting any of that motion, but not so tight that the socket can't be easily donned or isn't comfortable to wear for extended periods of time without causing hot spots. It's a very fine balance. I begin the process by pulling a plaster cast out of the silicon master mold, being sure to include a lag in the base so that I have a way of securely holding on to the plaster while I'm working on it. While the plaster is still green, I use a coarse sawzall blade to by hand cut the thumb off the plaster buck. I trim it parallel to the metacarpal of the index. Then I introduce a small radius to blend the two planes. For the most part, I leave the back of the buck alone since I don't have a lot of excess tissue on the back of my hand. Something you may want to think about is to add a small piece of foam to where the capitate bone is on the back of your hand, just to bump that part of the shell up so you can add a little bit of silicone into that area of the shell. It's going to receive the combined force of both the load applied to the metacarpals and the forearm. It's essentially the fulcrum of a teeter-totter. Now let's turn our attention to the palm side of the buck. This is where the magic happens. Through experience, I've figured out that I like this area of the socket to be just a little bit tighter. Forming a hollow in the palm of the socket has the added benefit of giving me just a little bit more suspension with the socket. Also, by increasing the pressure on this part of my hand, I find that I have a lot better proprioception with the finished device. Once I have the plaster buck about to its final shape, I'll go ahead and print this interface check block to make sure that the metacarpal plates are going to fit and I'll have the right alignment. Once the check block fits nicely and you're happy with the overall shape of the buck, it's time to make a check socket to make sure that the shell produced by this plaster is going to fit your residual limb. It took me a while to come up with this method and I think it's really going to work for most instances, but it's in no way the only way to make a check socket. To make the check socket, I'll be thermoforming the center portion of a one liter bottle over the plaster buck, then trimming it to the rough profile and checking its fit. Once I have it trimmed to the rough profile, I'll use aluminum light mold putty to fill in the hollow on the palm. Now, of course, this isn't gonna give you 100% fit, but it'll give you an idea if you're on the right track. For this process, you can either use a hot air gun or propane torch. The only thing about using a propane torch is you have to be really careful not to overcook the plastic. So it's probably a pretty good idea to use the cutoff end of the bottle as practice just to see how hot's too hot and how the plastic's going to shrink. I start by cutting the top of the bottle off and then sliding it over the plaster. You want to make sure that the inside of the bottle is super dry because if there's any moisture it'll cause it to shrink a little bit funny right there. A one liter bottle makes a pretty snug fit. Once I have the end crimp, I just start shrinking the rest of it until it's pretty even tension. Mm -hmm. 
Now that I have the plastic shrunk, I use a Sharpie to draw the rough profile, and then using a Dremel, I'll score the check socket to the marks I made with a Sharpie on the plaster, so I can remove it and check for fit. When you're trimming the socket, it's always a good idea to be on the waist side of the line so that you can sand it to a better fit later. With the check socket trimmed, you can finally remove the plaster from the shell. Now go ahead and finish trimming the profile to get it to the shape you're looking for. The next part of the process involves mixing up mold putty and filling this void in the palm of the hand. Go ahead and super glue the silicone in place to the bottle. Once the glue is dry, remove the plaster. Go ahead and wear the check socket around for a couple hours to make sure the fit is everything you're looking for. Well, that's all I have for this video. In the next video, I'll be doing the wet layup and vacuum bagging process to make the shell. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share my videos. And if you have time, Leave a comment in the comment section. Thanks for watching.